The Chaser Report is recorded on Gadigal land. Striving for mediocrity in a world of excellence, this is The Chaser Report. Hello and welcome to The Chaser Report. I am Charles Firth. I am still Dom Knight. And we're going to get straight into it because today is an amazing episode where I am going to attempt in 15 minutes to explain the entire global banking system. At last. Yes. At last summer. You're not one of these people who thinks that like a particular ethnic group or mm. aliens or reptilians are behind it all, are you? Because that's going to take less than 15 minutes and be very, <laughs> very racist. No, no, no. All the banks are collapsing at the moment. So mm. I want to just explain a little bit about why that's happening. Can because- we just do an ad first? Here it is. There you go. But the thing is that it's sort of um, like grist for the mill for a comedy podcast, right? Like, oh, look, the, the, the number of emails we get at podcast.chase.com yeah. today demanding like, an episode on the global banking system. We like, we like your jokes. What about banking systems? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So it all started about two years ago, right? So – what happened was the government, I don't know whether you remember there was a pandemic. Do you remember that? Can I just make an aside here that mm. um, this topic came up because I asked Charles mm. about two minutes ago, can you explain that whole thing with Deutsche Bank? He hasn't done any prep. <laughs> I cannot <laughs> wait to see how this goes. Uh, this could, do well, not this is- submit this as a reference for your economics <laughs> degree, okay? Charles, yes, I remember the pandemic. So this is why I'm padding for time because I don't remember <laughs> what I remember. So the thing is, so the pandemic meant that all the governments around the world panicked and they just started giving away free money. Yes, that's right. Right, yeah. That was very nice of them. Yes. Uh, and not so much to people. Mm, no, 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 corporations. But, yeah, to, mm. to banks, right, basically. And they had this thing called the repo rate, which actually dropped below zero for a little while, which basically means that you can you can you could literally, as a bank, borrow money – and then you'd have to pay back less money than you'd borrowed. You, there was a negative interest de- rate. <coughs> what an amazing – oh, that's right. What an amazing deal because, I mean, just thinking of us as potential homeowners, mm. wouldn't it be brilliant to borrow, I don't know, a million dollars and then have to only pay back 900 yeah. No, not even interest rates, no. less than the amount you actually borrowed. Yeah, and, like, over the course of time, yeah. every, every <laughs> you'd be given a little bit of extra money yeah. um, every time. Just for the privilege each of month. having bought something. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so that was all good. And then, um, and as you wrote, might recall, in Australia, Philip Lowe, the genius of on genius of uh, the Reserve Bank of Australia, he said, oh, look, and I can't see any way in which we'll possibly raise interest rates well into the future. 24, 25, you know, that sort of time is going to be when we start raising interest rates, right? Well, that was a, a classic moment. Mm. To remind me what the Reserve Bank governor does and the board do, don't they only have one lever? His job is to, cor- to correctly predict interest rates. That's the one <laughs> thing that they do. <laughs> I've read literally... entire articles on this, that the yes. Reserve Bank needs more tools in its arsenal to, mm. ma- to manage uh, monetary it... policy, but it only has one, yes. interest rates. And so, it's not very good at using that tool. Like, so by maybe... constraining his future <laughs> options for years ahead, yeah. he, he basically fucked up his job Three years in advance. Let's give him a whole lot of other tools that he can misuse. That's a great idea. Like, no, take that one away. Anyway, so. He gets 900 grand a year, by the way. So, and he, yes. Oh, for, 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 for being a tool, yeah. is that what I said? If you're wondering whether, you know, why he's doing 10 interest rate rises in a row, it might be because if you live on $900,000 a year, you don't necessarily think about where your next mortgage payment is going to go. Well, so they get discounted mortgage rates, you know, when you work for the Reserve Bank. You're fucking kidding. I'm me. not kidding you. Okay, I'm going to murder someone. Well, the argument. So was, wait a minute. Let's he's, cut this bit out. But no, he's not. He, <clears> so he, so Philip Lowe. No, don't cut this out. This is staying in. No, but no. But the Philip, theory is that they they could earn more in the private sector. So it's one of the se- the benefits that they get supposedly. Oh, that's is is access to discount mortgages. It's been in the news that Philip Lowe oh. gets a discount interest rate. Point is. Inflation is out of control. And the reason why inflation is out of control is not because of the normal reason. Like normally when inflation runs out of control, Mm. it's because workers all band together and go, we want a pay rise, and the employers have to give them a pay rise. Does that ever happen anymore? Well, it it happened once in the 1970s. Okay, okay. And, And thereafter, you know, the entire political class learnt that you must never give pay rises to anyone ever again. And right? certainly not let them unionise. Yes. And so they sort of destroyed the unions, destroyed the ability for workers to earn pay rises. And so 
inflation has started. Inflation has started for lots of reasons. Like if you happen to give a whole lot of free cash to lots of people, that drives up prices, right? Yeah. But also it, it's because, you know, companies are wanting to make more profit and and uh, there's been a lot of consolidation of a lot of industries, which means there's less competition, which means their power to be able to put up prices willy-nilly is actually greater than it used to be. That's interesting. If, you, if, you, if money is essentially free, mm. if you're the big fish, you'll just eat all the other little fish using the free money to do it. Exactly. I could run a big company, couldn't I, with that sort of insight? Oh, look, look, you are way too skilled to run a big company, Dom. You have to, you, you'd have to forget everything you know about ethics, morality. Oh, okay. I could probably do that for the right, <laughs> for the right pay packet. Yeah. Okay, so that's what's okay. happened. So all this money's been okay. sloshing around. So it's been sloshing around. It's got to go somewhere. It goes into prices. Suddenly, so everyone, but wages aren't rising. So everyone's just going backwards, right? At this point, you go, okay, so what was happening to the banks during this thing? Now, the really big ones, they've got a whole lot of rules around them that sort of, mean that they've got to have the right reserves. The little ones in America had this uh, sensational system where they went, okay, little banks need to have lots of reserves. After 2008, they say, like after there was a big banking crisis in 2008. Yeah, I remember. We need, we need banks to invest in really safe assets. Let's just say, you know, government bonds oh, would that's be a great thing. Famously the most safe asset. Yeah, yeah of all. So, so let's, let's have a look at what's happening. The government has handed out a whole lot of money to the banks and mm. the banks have gone, hmm, what should we do with all these things? I know, we'll use it to buy government debt, right? <laughs> using <laughs> government money. Yeah, right. using government money that has incurred a government debt. Like literally, it's a sort of roundabout, right? It, Which re- it reminds me a little bit of mortgage-backed securities, but anyway. Yes. Exactly. The same thing happened. Uh, exactly. So then... But then the government started going, well, as interest rates are rising, this is going to be a fucking nightmare of a problem, right? Because what's going to happen is all this government debt that's like in 30-year bonds and things like that is going to become less and less worthful because it's like we, we were we were handing out these this debt at like 1%. Mm. You can now get 4% on that money. All, all those... Investment decisions by banks that oh. on the cheap sort of so because they could have got they could have made more money elsewhere. So the they government bond turns out to yeah. be a shit investment. It, it turned out to be a bit of a shit investment. The government said, "Okay, doesn't matter. You know what we'll do? We'll make this new accounting rule, which means that you don't have to mark to market. You don't have to say, oh, what's the true value of that thing if I actually had to sell it today?'" Hang on, hang on, hang on. Isn't you know where I've heard that phrase before? The mark to market mm. Enron. That's the first time. Yeah. <laughs> was, that's yeah. the problem with the Enron scandal. They <laughs> used the wrong form of accounting and yes. didn't actually yes. accurately. So they've just gone, why don't you use Enron accounting standards? No, no, no. I think it's the exact opposite. Enron used mark to market to game the accounting system in mm. one way because they went, oh, well, all the prices are rising, so we're going to mark to market. Oh, we'll, we'll factor them in now. And so what the government did was, oh, dear, all the prices are falling. You know what we're going to do? We're going to abolish mark-to-market accounting for small banks just so that it doesn't look like they're all fucking broke. But it essentially right? still changes the accounting rules mm. to look more yeah. favourable. The Chaser Report. Less news, less often. And let's be clear, they're not actually insolvent. So they've got like, so Silicon Valley Bank, which collapsed a couple of weeks ago, it had $200 billion worth of 30-year bonds in the government, right? So if they could have just waited for 30 yes. years, that would have been fine. Everyone could have been made back whole, right? <laughs> but because they had to – because everyone was going, oh, fuck, I want to get my money out of this fucking bank, it's all a disaster because they've all invested in these in shitty long-term bonds that are really undervalued now. There was a run on the bank, very sensibly, and so, so then – the well, they, they couldn't have given the money, presumably, for the moment, when there was a run on the bank. They yeah. wouldn't have had the liquid, well, yeah, liquid assets because it yeah. was all in government bonds. So they weren't actually insolvent. And they, they couldn't illiquid. sell the bonds. They couldn't yes. sell the bonds without making a huge loss because yes. the government bonds, if you cash them in early, you've got to cash them in at the amount, at the amount yeah. then. Wow. Yes. So, Charles, so, is so, it just me? So is then it? one more step yeah, yeah. before we, you know, step down, which is – then everyone looked around. So, so Silicon Valley Bank and another bank called Signature Bank both collapsed because of this problem. Right. And then everyone looked around and went, 
Well, that pretty much summarises pretty much every bank in the world at the moment. Like, they're all underwater from buying long-term government bonds and things like that. Actually, there's an argument to say that most banks, especially the shittiest ones, Mm. are all going to go bankrupt. Right, but also (laughs) potentially the most responsible ones that have lots of government bonds because that was the thing you were supposed to do before. Yes, yes, exactly. And so there's been this amazing outflow in the last week, 100 no, four hundred and seventy billion US dollars was withdrawn from smaller banks, shitty little banks, shitty little banks, mm. and put into the larger banks. Right, that type of money flow just doesn't happen in the banking system normally. Like, there's not four hundred and seventy billion dollars worth of cash just lying around no. to facilitate. Those that. are like those are like crypto yeah. level made up numbers. Yeah. So what the government has done is they've invented this new facility which means that they've just had to print $470 billion worth of money wow. to enable everyone to sort of transfer their money out of these shitty little banks, right? So, the, But the thing is, and this is, the, this is the hilarious thing of it, is that the whole reason that people like Philip Lowe and fucking Powell and the, Jay Powell in the US and, like, everywhere, the whole reason that they started raising interest rates was to get rid of this excess money that was everywhere. Like they, It was to soak up all that money and stop have it just printing money and giving it away, right? And what they've done in the last week is more than cancels out all the interest rate rises that we've had. We're back to quantitative easing. We're back to just printing out money to fucking save a sinking ship. And interest rates supposedly are now going to go uh, stop being raised, right? Like if you've got a well, mortgage or something. no, I don't think that's I true. I wouldn't. I mean, I, no. I presume the consumer won't win. Because yeah. it's just, I, I, I'm no expert on finance, but but just observing occasionally, occasionally the industry becomes so big you have to pay attention to it. Mm. And the trend that's, that I'm seeing, to, what seems to happen, Charles, correct me if I'm wrong, mm. is that whenever there's a massive problem, mm. the government steps in mm. and uses our taxpayers' money mm. to fix it. So, for instance, you know, 2008 financial crisis, they, they shored up all the bank deposits and so on. Even now they've said to Silicon Valley Bank customers, the government in the US, Joe Biden said, don't worry, you won't lose any money. Mm. So when there's a problem, mm. it's always public funds that are used to fix it. Mm. But am I, am I right in saying that whenever there's not a problem, mm. all the profits stay with the banks. But Dom, Dom, it can't be any other way. So because because imagine if the risk and the reward remained with the public. And imagine if all the banks then, weren't in private hands, hmm. then you'd actually get the upside for the use of the public money. Yes, well exactly. That's very unfashionable. We can't have no, that. We you can't, can't have, have that. You wouldn't have the government making a profit out of something. They but, can the government can only make a loss. The private sector must mm, make a, a profit. Yeah. And then inevitably all the money the private sector makes, all those profits trickle down so that everyone everyone gets a good standard of living. Mm. That's the way it works, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't that how we're feeling at the moment? We're all having everyone's enjoying a wonderful standard of living where you can just afford everything. You well, can afford to live. The thing is that when you step back and you look at things like the global banking system, you do go why on earth do, do any of us go on? Why on earth do we put up with this fucking piece of shit mode of accumulation yeah. that we've got where, I mean, like I saw this analysis the other day which pointed out that if you actually looked at the basic necessities of life like housing and, and, and rent and, and food and stuff like that, that the average person should be earning about $300,000 a year right now compared to, say, mm. 30 or 40 years ago, right? But actually all that money has just clumped together and gone to uh, the uh, bankers uh, and the CEOs. And, and Elon Musk. Yeah. By the looks of it. Yeah. The Who did you class. see? Did you see the other day um, approvingly uh, tweeted a speech by Senator Malcolm Roberts, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's encouraging. Yeah. Um, so so why, why don't we just sort of like do what they're doing in Paris and just burn down the whole city? No, that's that's. No, that that's you got it wrong, Charles. That's that's backwards thinking. That's socialist, revolutionary bullshit. Mm. What you do yeah. is what a, a bright-eyed, visionary bunch of Sydney siders did a couple of decades ago. Oh, yeah. You start Macquarie Bank. Yeah. If I can't beat them, I'm going to join and have my own bank. Chase a bank. It wasn't until Macquarie Bank existed that someone had the idea of why don't we just buy an asset mm. and then sell, sell it. it. 
but while paying ourselves exorbitant management fees. And and the key is to buy government assets. Yes, you buy you buy a natural lease, monopoly. Then lease them back to the government. That's right. You buy something yes. that can't possibly be replicated, like a toll road mm. or Sydney Airport. Airport. Yeah, and then who's paying for the mm. for the other airport? You, did you know, by the way, that in the deal of privatisation, yes, uh, the Sydney Airport owners Mac- uh, Macquarie's moved on yes. long ago. Oh god! But yes. the owners of the airport had the right to buy any other airport <laughs> that was opening in Sydney. <laughs> you couldn't possibly have. A public airport in Western Sydney. You could without, not have a, a duopoly. Yeah, without the yeah. monopolists yeah. getting the chance to, and they turned it down. Fuck, because they're like, oh, Western Sydney, fuck that. But no, that's so. We just need to start our own bank. Okay, well, we have. It's called Chaser Bank. Chaserbank.org. People have been visiting it we, since we last mentioned it a couple of weeks ago. We've had dozens of people but fill in the form. Why don't we start it, Charles? Okay, we're going to start It's very it. clear yes. that if we fuck it up, and we're likely oh, yes. to fuck it up, but the we government will. will just bail us out. Yeah, because that, is, that was totally my thought was like, but what if we fuck it up? And you go, oh, no, we should fuck it up. We won't go to jail. The person who'll go to jail is probably Lachlan. Yeah. Like some someone the in patsy. their 20s who doesn't know the, what they're doing. We get the patsy. We'll be fine. Okay, we're going to do it. Yep. Does anyone know how do you get a financial services license? Ah, surely I think you don't, you've got to be you don't a, need it that do you? You don't have to be of good character, do you? I mean No, you've probably got to be of bad not, character. <laughs> you're not gonna tell me there's a rigorous process for awarding financial seriously, financial <laughs> services licenses? Yeah. I don't think so. Nah. I think I think we're yeah. overqualified. I think you we're too ethical. You just sort of swing by ass here. Can... I was only arrested that one time. <laughs> Doing a chase of stunt. I'll be the CEO. Surely you've got to have some sort of accounting degree or something. It would only slow you down, <laughs> knowing how to balance the book. They don't balance they the books. Don't. Why we? It is. All right. All right. We'll have it coming soon. You can bank with us. Yeah. Just don't expect to get your money back. It'll If you have lower expectations. No, no. You will get your money back. Oh, yeah. The government will guarantee it. Paid for by the government. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You will. It, we're the only chase <laughs> of venture ever to make money. <laughs> yeah. All right. Our gear is from Road. We are part of the Iconoclast Network and today's episode was sponsored by Chaser Bank. Coming soon. bank you know you can't trust. (laughs)